Good morning, everyone. This is Paul Robinson here at Daily FX. I'm going to go through today's session of London FX and CFD trading. Take a look at some charts, some potential trade setups. We do have a holiday environment coming up. Good morning, Marino. Hope you're doing well. Uh, but first, before we get started, as per usual, give yourself 10 or 15 seconds to read through the risk disclaimer and we'll get started. Alrighty then. Let's uh, let's get started. All right, got a few charts to look at today. Uh, obviously, tomorrow tomorrow is a U.S. holiday, so for those of you U.S., hopefully you have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Uh, for everyone else who's still participating in the market, but uh, outside of the U.S. Markets could be, are going to be a little slow. Uh, expect holiday trading-like environment. That is low volume, limited volatility. Uh, probably will carry on through to Monday, I would say, as people take an extended weekend through Friday. Uh, so with that said, uh, in terms of trading setups, you know, we're going to be a little limited here, but we'll look at some charts and and uh, we've got some stuff that's that's developing and some things that we've been talking about that continues to unfold, uh, especially in the in the precious metals sector, but as well as in the currency markets and and of course we've got new record highs and and U.S. indices waiting for Europe to kind of follow on through here, perhaps. Uh, you know, I just actually, well, let me, let me just get an audio check if I could, uh, audio visual, make sure that everything is firing on all cylinders. I show that we're okay here, but that doesn't mean it's okay on your end. So if I could get just a thumbs up, that'd be great. All right. Looks like we are, we are a okay. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Marino. All right, so dollar index, right? So dollar index, uh, you know, obviously the trend's been very strong lately. Uh, there's, there's basically, it's basically baked in the cake, though, that we're going to have a, a rate hike here come in December. So on that front, there's really nothing, uh, you know, nothing to discuss. Uh, this, this, this trade, you know, in terms of dollar moving higher, you know, this could be. You know, there's there's a number of factors at play here. We obviously had that huge spike, uh, lower and then higher with the uh, with the surprise Trump victory in the U.S. presidential election, uh, which kicked off this rally. But looking at this thing right now, technically, right, we're above. You know, we're trading at 13 and a half year highs, right? So, you know, we're trading above these prior resistance levels, and 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 so obviously, what is what does prior resistance become? Come support. So that's that's the first thing, right? So right now we've got we've got some good support here at the old highs around 150. Uh, if we even make it back down there, you know. So right now what we're getting is a little bit of a congestion phase, which is to be expected, you know, following a a massive move like this, right? A little a little congestion period here, and then again, you know, we've got the holiday in the U.S. tomorrow you know, likely to carry on through the weekend into next week. So we got a couple more days that, you know, the market will be quiet and some congestion. And then perhaps next week as we, you know, start to ramp things back up uh, across the board, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll maybe see some follow through then on the dollar. But at this time, you know, it, it remains well bid. Uh, it remains, it remains a market that's, that's got support. Uh, it, it's not a trend that, that, I have a whole lot of interest in even trying to fight. Uh, good morning, Joseph. Uh, it's it's not a it, it's not a, a trend that I want to fight. You know, it, it's it's something that I want to continue to 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 either be on the sideline because we don't get a good you know a good entry on some of the you know, some of the pairs, uh, or you know at, at 
that, that at the very least, right? So it's not something at least, you know, maybe maybe you don't get a great dollar long on, you know, after a big move like this, maybe we just continue to extend, you know, and it's difficult to, to enter into a position. But with that said, I uh, don't want to be fighting it, uh, you know, until there's a good reason, right? Until there's a good reason, until, until we see some type of price action either from higher levels, uh, which indicates a reversal, or if we start sinking back down through uh, some support levels with with some serious conviction. So with that, you know, we'll move on now to some of the currency pairs. Uh, we'll start out with the euro, the typical, right? The anti dollar. Uh, so so we've got the euro here sitting at this this trend line support going back to to March of 2015, and my confidence level on this holding is not real high. Uh, you know, again, it's it's it was it was something that I discussed before as not being uh, something I wanted to be short on. Uh, but as we sit here and consolidate, we're not really showing any kind of signs of life here. Uh, we, we you know we go to the four hour. You know, we've obviously got this strong downtrend. Uh, we've got resistance levels up in the mid 106s. You know, we're, we're kind of forming here a, a bear flag, uh, a short term bear flag. So you know the fact that it's not you know this is one thing I like to, to to look at all right so we have some pretty good support here and we also have coming up some what I call horizontal support right this is the December 3rd low again where the euro got caught off guard Draghi didn't make his move but you know when you come down onto a support level in this case and you don't see a big response right you don't see you don't see the market really get excited about about buying euros or any market for that matter, and you see the market just kind of sit there, right? So big down move, got some support, but then the market just sits there. It, it, it tells you something, right? It tells you that there's just not a lot of interest. Uh, it, there's not a lot of interest in in buying, right? So so it, it tells you a little something because you know if you get to a resistance level or you get to a support level, and then you see the market quickly uh, reverse that that particular uh, asset class and in this case the euro then then you know it shows you that maybe there's some interest down there but we're not seeing any interest this things just kind of sitting dead in the water um, I don't anticipate it getting much back up above the upper 106 is maybe 107 on any kind of retracement and that to me would be like kind of best case short-term scenario uh, and, and, and even that right now given the given the really pathetic price action is is kind of kind of not even looking like that's a possibility right so right now I'm you know more focused on on the euro side uh, short uh, looking at cable right cable something that you know it's it's in this downtrend I don't have any really like amazing you know amazing daily tax on this we do have this trend line here okay which you know somewhat constitutes a, a bear flag here uh, but looking at it a little shorter term and we talked about this before um, I actually said over here that based on the fact that the, the cable was holding up, that it was maybe going to be potentially a good long uh, with a, with a dollar retracement, and it, it never it never even started to really materialize to the upside, and and then in fact dropped and and it came down to the support area, right, going back to to basically the middle of middle of October. Uh, you know, we took a, we took out these lows here, quickly retraced. What we're putting in here is a is a head and shoulders pattern right left shoulder head right shoulder all right our neckline is basically uh, the support area down around 123 with 123 basically being the the absolute low here uh, before the neckline would break I do think that this is something you know look again looking at not fighting a dollar trend uh, and getting a, an actual pattern in one of the one of the pairs right I think the I think that we could get down here Okay, so we get through 123, right? We get through 123, and you know we're really looking at like 121. That's 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 basically the the objective on this one. So this one is getting me excited a little bit, right? We have some parallel support uh, prior to that. Okay, so we can see top side, and we draw this off the bottom side. Uh, we'll extend it down a little bit more. Uh, so we could see we could see a little support here come in. Uh, prior to that 121 area uh, around 122 but given that the trend is down and that this pattern is 
is bearish, right? Um, you know, I view I view this lower parallel as being more of a minor support level. Okay, so maybe it gets down to the 122s and gets a little bit of a bounce. Uh, but right now, if it breaks through 123, you know, maybe 122 minor support. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, we're looking at maybe 121 or worse. Right, so at 121 through 123 is is the objective uh, at this time. Of course, this could again, you know, this could hold a support, and then in that case, there's you know maybe other alternatives that'll happen. Perhaps we'll, you know, we'll get a bounce, and and then we'll form out some kind of little wedge over here, and and in that case, we'll have to you know take the break, whether it's above this, this top side trend line or whether it's, you know, still has the, the same end result as this bearish head and shoulders pattern, all right, which is a breakthrough 123 down towards 122, 121. But as it stands right now, looking at that 123 level uh, as being pretty critical uh, given this, this, this bearish uh, sequence. Looking at Aussie, let's go look at Aussie. So Aussie right now is actually bouncing into a pretty good. Uh, so this is one that 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 if you you know those of you who've been following me you'll recall. Uh, you know I've been short on this thing, uh, covered a little bit into some support down here. I still have a a short position on. We are bouncing back up into resistance, right? So this was one support. Uh, so it now becomes resistance, right? So looking at this thing. Uh, you know, it's had a nice bounce. Okay, it's been one of the one of the strongest ones uh, to, to to recover on this little dollar consolidation. Uh, but it is at resistance. You know, we get to the four hour. Uh, we've even got a little bit of a reversal bar here that's taking shape at these prior lows. So I think that you know, right here, uh, if you're looking for a if you're looking for an Aussie short, okay, we've got a little uh, little short term upward channel here, right? You know, we got a little reversal bar, we break through uh, a little bit lower below this lower side parallel, and then I think that, that we're gonna see some trend resumption uh, back towards these these previous lows. This could even use a little consolidation period itself uh, to help kind of reload the, the cannon for another shot lower, uh, but generally speaking, you know, buying into this move is, is to me like is 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 not the play. Uh, it, it it's it's shorting the rally uh, into resistance is the play that I like right now, uh, and I do think that maybe we'll see some lower prices here uh, as soon as next week, uh, if not in the next you know day or two. We do have we do have a little bit of uh, market moving potential data right coming up. Uh, you know, today even we have uh, we have durable goods. We have the, the, the UK autumn budget statement, so that could have an impact on that, that cable trade. But uh, we've got durable goods uh, a little bit later today. And then this afternoon, we've got the minutes uh, from the November 1st, 2nd uh, FOMC meeting. So we could get a little volatility uh, you know, before tomorrow's holiday and, and holiday weekend, really. Uh, so right now, though, you know, again, Broke support, old support becomes new resistance. I mean, that's that's a pretty simple theme. It's something that we always talk about. Uh, it's not not a not a difficult concept to to wrap your head around. I don't think uh, dollar yen dollar yen is one. So you know, looking at the dollar uh, dollar spectrum, you know, my hesitancy on on dollar yen is is obviously as you can see here, we've got we've got a lot of resistance. Okay, it's been a really big move. It's got a lot of resistance. I could see dollar yen stalling out uh, around this 111 area uh, up to, you know, maybe towards 112. But we do have some pretty good resistance going all the way back. Uh, so to me, buying dollar yen into resistance, you know, something that I, I, I think I say every single time I get on the mic, uh, I don't buy don't buy into resistance. It don't short into support. You know, it's one of those things that that just it just generally looking. You know, sure, dollar yen could break on through, right? It could it could squeeze, it could break resistance and then squeeze hard. But you know, just generally speaking, in my experience, buying into a a, a known level, uh, it's better to wait for it to break through. You know, it'd be better off waiting to break through and then pull back, show that it, it's got some sponsorship, that it can hold. That 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 level that it just broke through, 
so dollar yen right now is not is not very high on my radar. Uh, it hasn't been. I you know I've, I've I haven't done anything in this entire move. Um, I've chose to I've chose to uh, place my chips elsewhere. Uh, but you know dollar yen again coming into some resistance. Uh, but you know the dollar dollar just generally keeps on going higher than than you know. It, it, it could break on through resistance. I just don't, you know. I'd prefer to take something. Uh, I'd prefer to take something that's that's not facing such a a major level at this time. Uh, let's take a look now. At yeah, sure. We'll take a care. We'll take a look uh, here at some crosses. Thomas says, "Good morning." Can you take a look at some JPY crosses? Sure. While we're on JPY, we might as well take a look at some JPY crosses. All right, so. Oh, I haven't updated this one. What the heck? That didn't transfer over from my... Boy, I tell you, you know, this cloud technology can be amazing and it can be uh, imperfect like everything, right? So everything's got a little bit of imperfection to it. It's kind of like trading. Uh, looking at pound yen, pound yen right here has some, some resistance. Okay, it's had a good run. Uh, it's hard to say, you know, you got dollar yen. I don't, you know, before I say this, I, you know, some of you who've, who've been following me again, you know, I don't like to break cross rates into, uh, I don't like to try to analyze both sides of the cross. I just kind of like to look at the chart. But, you know, thinking about it in the back of my head, I'm looking at dollar yen. It's at resistance. I'm looking at that that pound dollar chart we just looked at. And, uh and, and and yeah, it's 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 kind of one of those things where it's at resistance, and and so I'm not really sure which side's going to win out here, uh, but it certainly is at some resistance right here, and would and would need to get above this, you know, really into like 139 before it would have have a shot at getting a little bit higher. Uh, even with that said, uh, then we'd be looking at, you know, around this 140, 141 up to 143. Uh, so we do have some resistance ahead, but right now it definitely is facing. It's having a face off with that resistance. Uh, these charts did not transfer over. I apologize for that. Some old stale lines. That ain't going to do us any good, is it? Pierre asks, will I be putting this webinar on the tube? Yes, it will go on the tube. You may recall once I did not, rec I forgot to hit the record button and that did not happen. Uh, I'll post it to the site as well uh, when I'm finished. So if you want to, also it'll be the YouTube video, but uh, it'll it'll be on uh, in an in an article form uh, on the Daily FX website. So uh, if you want to go there uh, as well, you can. And I, I usually get that up about an hour after uh, hour after it concludes. So those of you who are joining me late. You can uh, you can still go back and, and see what I said uh, prior to your arrival. Uh, let's take a look at Aussie yen. Aussie yen. Yeah, you can see here I got a mess going on, right? This actually these charts these charts did transfer over. I'm not sure why the other ones didn't. Uh, Aussie yen is kind of a mess to me. All right, so Aussie yen, you know, to me it's it's you know it's got Aussie working for it right now. So we're seeing this little bump higher. It's got dollar yen, you know, hanging out. Uh, I really, I really don't. <laughs> I'm really not finding anything good in the uh, in the in the yen cross rates, to be honest with you. So it's kind of something that I haven't really been focusing on. Uh, there seems to be a lot of cross dynamics there with with such strength coming out of uh, coming out of out of dollar yen. But then you know you got the euro getting blasted and you had Aussie getting blasted and you know just Generally, it's 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 just to me it's been a difficult space, uh, so I've kind of stayed away from it. But looking at one that it still it still hasn't developed, right? Looking at a cross rate, it still hasn't developed fully. Uh, it's been a little frustrating, so I've kind of uh, I've kind of backed off. So when things get difficult, um, you know, it's a good idea to just kind of back away. If like a market's not really acting the way that that you you know foresaw that it would act it was going to act right so we build scenarios in our head based on our analysis and then and then we you know we look for the market to kind of confirm what we're thinking uh euro Aussie has been a really tough one because you know we had this breakdown below this 144 area uh nice big strong down bar uh got me involved 
and then it quickly, you know, it dropped and then quickly reversed. Uh, but what we could getting, be getting here is a descending wedge. Now this would be a pretty sweet pattern to form uh, given that, you know, basically you'd have a microcosm of this descending wedge. So you'd have this breakdown right below this, this trend line that goes back to, to April of last year, this 144 area. And it, right now it's, you know, it's, it's, it's held below resistance over here, which was once support. It's held below that trend line. It's now, you know, after dropping, it's now not even bouncing as high as it did before. So it's starting to abide by this, this 144 area. So we would, but I would need to see a little bit more, right? So right now it's, it's kind of a partial pattern. You know, I'd like to see another drop down here, maybe 141, 75, 142, then get one more bounce and then roll over. So this is one that, that will continue to track. Uh, it may take another week or two before it materializes, but I do like it uh, because when you look to the left, right? Anytime you look at a, a trade setup, technically, you want to look to the left, right? You look to the left to see, to see, you know, how much, how much is going to stand in the way of your trade. And when I look to the left on this, you know, there's really, there's really not a lot until you get down to around this 130 or 9, 140 area, right? And then, and then even further down, you know, not until you get under 137. So if we can get a nice bearish formation here, you know, we've got, we've got a few hundred points to play with, uh, where there's just not a lot of, of good horizontal support uh, to the left. So with that in mind, uh, given the trend, given the broken uh, support now resistance, and then the possibility of a bearish, uh, you know, bearish descending wedge, this this could be a, a nice, exciting opportunity um, coming up soon. So you know, we'll just have to be patient on this one, though. This isn't one that's you know gonna gonna work out for us right away, and and that's been the case. So. You know, I'm fine just based on its price action. I'm I'm fine with just kind of hanging out and and looking elsewhere for opportunities while this one uh, sits in the incubator. Take a look at uh, Dollar Max. Dollar Max, not one I look at often, but uh, Dollar Max is, is is kind of interesting because we've got this we've got this coiling of volatility, right? So that's what a triangle is. It's, it's just simply an expansion of volatility, which then turns into an, a contraction of volatility, which is how markets work, right? That's how markets work. So with that said, you know, given that, that that's the, the, the function of markets, that's why this pattern forms, you know, it's not, you know, it's not just some geometrical shape that we just like come up with and decide, you know, the market decides, hey, this is, <laughs> this is going to be a trading pattern, you know, all patterns, you know, that, that are, that are worth trading have some sort of, you know, underlying reason as to why they form, okay, so, you know, even a head and shoulders with as goofy of a name as it is, uh, it has supply and demand dynamics attached to it, which make it, uh, which which make it a, a viable pattern uh, from from even a logical standpoint. Okay, so you know some people like to make fun of the the different patterns that are out there, and 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 you know basically that's you know it's it's all it's all driven by natural dynamics in the market. You know, right? we just identify them in these simple terms. So all we've got here is a contraction in volatility. Right and contractions and volatility lead to expansions and volatility. Round and round we go. Right, it's like volatility is like a it's like a sine wave. It just goes up and down, up and down. Right. So you know, and, and sometimes those periods, you know, they're they're asymmetrical. You have long periods of low volatility, then short periods of high, and then vice versa, um, which is usually the way that it works. You know, lower volatility seems to work out a little longer than than high periods of volatility, but with that said, we've got a, a contraction here. Uh, which way it'll break? I mean, the prior trend was up. To me, this is consolidation in, in, in fashion. But, you know, if you don't want to trade dollar max, uh, you don't want to trade the peso, the czar, all those things, you know, I completely understand. They're, they're, they're not for the faint of heart. They can have some really bizarre, uh, no pun intended, some bizarre moves uh, that, that can take shape. So... You know, if you don't trade those things, and they're, you're not comfortable with them, then then don't trade those things, right? So stick to the markets that, and the, and the currency pairs and the you know commodities and and indices that you're most comfortable with, 
uh, you know, I've got my little basket of things that I like to trade uh, that, that that seem to to form up uh, a little better than than some of the others, uh, based on my you know my thinking and, and my analysis. Uh, you know, so it's always a good idea to kind of to kind of concentrate on a few things, anyways. Uh, it just it makes life a little simpler. You might you might miss some opportunities elsewhere. You may miss some opportunities by not looking at certain things. Uh, or trading them, maybe you just keep them as a secondary indicator. Uh, you know, maybe some cross market analysis. But you know, you may miss some things. But at the end of the day, if you get to know your markets, that that can be a lot better than uh, than trying to spread yourself too thin. Uh, you know, I like to trade indices. You know, I do trade currencies. Uh, I dabble a little bit in the precious metals uh, sector, uh, but generally, you know, it's indices and and a few of the currency pairs. I like to keep the the focus of the concentration of my trading, and if I, you know, go into something like Dollar Max, for example, uh, then you know I reduce size uh, because it's 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 a market that I've, I, you know, in, in my experience, while it can have some good technical setups, uh, it, it also it also moves in some some interesting ways uh, that aren't always for the best. Pierre, I'll circle back around on the uh, the euro uh, closer to uh, concluding on this. I'm going to kind of run through a few things here uh, first. Um, gold, all right, gold. So we got we got we got dollar, we got dollar strength, we got precious metal weakness. I know that may sound obvious. It's not always that obvious, right? So let's take a look at this chart. Wasn't obvious over here when they were correlated. Wasn't obvious over here when it was correlated. You know, there's there's been numerous times where the correlation uh, between gold and silver and the dollar uh, have have you know separated or or should I say come come together, right? Um, seen some pretty strong moves where they both move in the same direction and everybody's kind of scratching their head like that can't happen. But you know what, it can. So I like to keep correlations in the background. Um, you know, they kind of just help like really simplify what's at that moment driving the market. Uh, obviously, we can see down here we have we have a, a negative correlation of almost 97%, which is about as extreme as it gets. Okay, so I wouldn't I wouldn't expect it to get any more extreme, and if anything, I, I would expect it to kind of revert a little bit. But again, don't focus too much on that. You know, in, in, in my in my view, I don't like to focus on that so much as I like to look at you know what's actually going on in the individual. You know, in this case, gold or silver which we're going to look at next I like to look at those and then just keep in mind that okay you know the dollar is the dollar is strong right and and right now we're seeing you know as we talked about earlier the dollar is hanging out above prior uh, resistance right so it's hanging out holding support so far uh, which which at this this juncture will will keep pressure on gold uh, you know we, we look here a little bit closer uh, you know, there's really not anything on the very short term in gold that's giving giving a great uh, a great setup uh, per se. But I do expect that I do expect that that this will continue to uh, to move lower. We do have to keep this 1,200 uh, level in mind, though. Uh, it, it was it was a big pivot over here in May. Uh, we've also got to keep 1,190 in mind, uh, which was I consider also be extremely important because it was the swing high that was broken when this trend really started to take hold, right? So it was like we had all these this downtrend, boom, 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 and then all of a sudden gold takes out, you know, it makes a higher high for like basically the first time in a long time. And given that it had broke that and made the higher high, and then came back and retested it almost, almost to the dollar, right? It came almost to the dollar uh, as support. I would look to 1,200 down to 1,190 as being the the near-term objective, and perhaps we'll see some we'll see some weakness then set in in the dollar, and we'll get a little bounce out of gold. I don't know. Maybe gold will just bounce. Uh, silver uh, again is is actually more of I have I have more interest in silver right now. Again, getting back to what I was saying before about looking to the left. What do we have to the left? We don't have a lot to the left, do we? You know, I mean, we've got this, right? But we don't have any swing, really, any any pivots. You know, we're we're, we're sitting here, uh, kind of in a little air pocket, right? Between the low 17s down to 1580 to 16, we'll call it. Uh, and yesterday, 
yesterday we had a, a nice reversal day, right? So, so gold or silver, I'm sorry, silver tried to rally, tried to rally, and it found resistance right over here, right? So there was, we can see here, there was some play uh, for two or three days. Uh, it was just right around the close of this day. Found some resistance yesterday, reversed hard. Okay, this this to me, uh, you know, uh, looking at this from the standpoint of, of you know, fresh fresh shorts, right? If you haven't already been short, uh, you know, you've got you've got basically this high here, which is around sixteen eighty nine, right? If it doesn't get above there, you know, this pin bar should lead to a continuation trade here. So I'm looking for I'm looking for this in the next few days. Uh, to, to continue to move down towards the target that we've been talking about here for a little while. So silver to me is is, is looking pretty good. Uh, don't really have anything on the shorter term charts to, to operate off of other than you got that, that pin bar on the daily. Uh, we're below resistance. We're in this air pocket. So I like silver. I like silver short. Take a look at U.S. oil. U.S. oil actually, I don't trade a ton of oil. Uh, U.S. oil actually. I'm gonna go ahead and pat my myself on the back on this one. I drew this out like I don't know a couple sessions ago, right? It, like like a, I don't know, whatever. I drew it back over here. Whatever the whatever that that day was the the last time we had a webinar there that that I drew this in. I drew this in as being a, a possible scenario. Uh, this little gap here is actually not really real. Uh, it was a it was a rollover to the to the next next expiration uh, but we ha we had an inverse head and shoulder situation develop it developed it worked out pretty well uh, which on the daily you know took took us back up to a retest of this February trend line okay I actually got a little bit above uh, touched off at some resistance around 49 and then we had this this kind of nasty uh, you know almost a doji like day uh, to me this this Serious rejection uh, at resistance and attempt to take over this trend line uh, likely means that we're going to see some weakness set in, and it's always possible. Okay, it's always possible that we have this turn into. Okay, so we had an inverse head and shoulders. It's possible that we have a, a, a more macro head and shoulders setting in. Okay, and and the right shoulder would be coming at a very interesting spot. It would be this inflection point between this trend line being retested this left shoulder right so and then and then a strong rejection so this could be the beginning of a of a right shoulder of of a of a head and shoulders pattern um so right now i like i like oil to to turn back a little bit lower here uh to me oil is you know it's had this nice run uh to have resistance kind of a key reversal day uh, so I look for as long as it stays below 49.17 on a closing day basis, I look for, for oil to now turn back lower. We're going to move on to indices. Okay, let's uh, spread this out a little bit. All right, so the DAX, what a mess, right? So the DAX just kind of chopping sideways. Uh, not a, not a whole lot to sink your teeth into. It looks like it's consolidating, right? I wrote this. This is actually from an article this morning. Uh, consolidation below resistance could soon lead to a breakout over resistance. I need to see the strong daily bar close up here. Um, as long as it is it holds really uh, within this range, then the DAX is is kind of just you know in a holding pattern, all right? Uh, the DAX could be. It's possible that it's it's going to form out some type of triangle here. We still could have a a head and shoulders type pattern, although it's starting to to get a little little. The, sim, the symmetry on it is not particularly great at this point. You know, you've got really close proximity to the left shoulder head, and then what would be the right shoulder? But we could get you know, especially with the next couple of days. You know, you're going to take the U.S. out of participation, so you're going to take a, a large chunk of, of of a driver away from from global markets we could see this kind of bobble around a little bit more don't have any you know grand expectations of seeing a massive move of course we've always got to be on our toes right 
doesn't mean that we can uh, necessarily, if we have a position on, we can't just walk away uh, and, and, and expect that the market won't do anything just because it's more likely that it won't, right? We have to we have to always be uh, paying attention. So, but this consolidation right here, I still view as being somewhat constructive. But until we get above resistance, you know, it's it's a it's you can't be really be a buyer uh, because basically you're buying uh, with anticipation that it's going to break out. Uh, and again, that's just not something I like to do. But uh, as long as it holds above this 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 low of this range, which is comes in at ten five seventy six, then you know there's really nothing to 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 see here. Uh, you know, if it breaks below there, then it, then things start to get a little dicey. Uh, take a look at the FTSE. So we got the FTSE up here. Uh, it held held this trend line, all right? Held this trend line. This is a good reason right here. This is a good example. So what happened was is we had this big rally, in in you know the U.S. You got the Nikkei, which has been flying. You've got the DAX, you know, the, which had the big pop and then holding out the CAC, doing the same thing. And then there was the old FTSE. The old FTSE was doing nothing, right? And and that that nothing activity on this trend line hinted towards that there wasn't a lot of buying interest, but it was support nevertheless. And so if you were selling into the support level with anticipation, it was going to break. You're now paying for it. Right, so this is a good lesson right here. Uh, I even tweeted this out one day because you know it was, it was. Uh, I don't remember exactly what day it was, but but it was dropping and then and then started a rally. Um, I think it might have even been, I think it might even been this 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 dark day here. Uh, we were down here at the lows, got to the highs, and then I believe it, it it sunk back towards the lows by the end of the day. But the point is, is that if you shorted down here with anticipation that it's going to break, uh, you know, at some point during that day you were you were paying for it, and then the next day you were certainly paying for it. So you know, the the moral of the story there was, you know, don't short support even if you even if you're convinced it's going to go lower. Uh, see, I I was actually thinking that it was going to break. You know, but again, you know, sticking to that that hard fast rule of not shorting support or buying resistance kind of keeps you out of trouble there, right? So right now we're seeing the FTSE bounce up here. Uh, I would be my interest in selling this would be peaked. Should we get up here, right? We have really good resistance uh, in the 69.55.12 area, uh, as long with this trend line coming off the record highs. Okay, so that would be an, an area that that should it reverse from, uh, I would be interested in uh, as as a as a seller. Now we will get to the U.S. So here we go. We got the S and P's, S and P's, boom, rallying, rallying, rallying. All right, we've got some support here on pullbacks. We do have some hidden resistance, right? So we've got this top side trend line which crosses over these peaks. Uh, it's it's almost there. Okay, it could be there today. Uh, you know, it's not the it's not the strongest type of resistance, but it certainly could be something that the market can react off of. We are trading around. You know, depending on how you draw it, we're trading around this this trend line that that was broken that goes back to the February lows. So there there is a little bit up here, and you got the Russell, which has been up like a thousand days in a row. I mean, this thing is just incredible. You, this is, you know, I, I did a little, I did a quick scan, and this is like right up there, with like the most up days in a row. It's like twelve or thirteen. Uh, it's, it's the, it's just ridiculous. You know, I mean, this, this kind of persistent move just doesn't happen very often. So I look for the small cap index to, uh, to take a little breather here, uh, shortly. And then we've got the Dow. If the Dow pulls back, you know. We've got a little support at this this backside of this Feb 11 trend line. Uh, got a little support down here in the 18.8s. Uh, again, though, you know, just generally speaking, it's very tough. It's very tough to fight these things, right? It's very tough to fight these things. So even though we got this resistance in the S&P, you know, I'm not real excited about being a short. I think it's a it's not the best spot to be a long. Uh, and and history has shown us that it's not, you know, it's not a good idea to to you know, especially if you're looking out, you know, for an intermediate term or even a long-term play, it's not a good idea to buy breakouts. Uh, the over the or since we made a new record high in 2013 from the 2007 high, going till now, uh, the market has a really poor uh, track record of 
sustaining gains once it breaks out. So it'll break out maybe within a few days up to a couple of months later though, it'll be back below. So it's a tendency that, that's been in place on numerous occasions. Uh, nearly every time we've had a material pullback and then it shoots to new highs, at some point the market sank back below those old highs. Uh, and so, you know, in terms of chasing this from a, from a little bit of a longer term standpoint, it, it to me, you know, it just doesn't, isn't going to necessarily, you know, the risk reward isn't that great. Pullbacks are, are, are the best situation, uh, you know, to, to take advantage of these things. We've got the NDX. NDX, you know, we're pretty much taking this this head and shoulders possibility off the table. Uh, it 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 this was going to be the right shoulder, okay. Um, you know, you can see here I still have in this chart uh, that this that this is supported until it's not right. So this pattern never broke. So here's a good here's a good example of you know taking a a pattern trade before it actually triggers, because if if you if you were shorting right or even down here even worse if you were shorting because you thought oh this is a head and shoulders it's going to break right well then now you're paying for it so that's no good uh so right now we're going to take this off the board uh it was just a possibility it was something i was watching because we were having seen so much of a lagging nature in the nasdaq that i thought maybe it might become important uh if it if it does in fact start to materialize it'd be important to the broader market uh but as it stands you know, really the NASDAQ 100 is the only index that hasn't made a record high yet. Uh, the composite has, the Russell has, the Dow has, the S&P has. Uh, and, and it would seem logical to conclude that the NDX will, will probably uh, get up and make that record high. All right, so we will, uh, I will take a couple questions now, take a look at a couple things. Uh, Pierre, if you're still with me, uh, I'll run back through the Euro real quick. Uh, so the euro, you know, sitting down here near support, okay, this trend line that, that goes back to this this March 2015 low, uh, back when everybody was absolutely certain we were going to parity. I can still remember that quite well. Uh, it seemed like all but a foregone conclusion to get there was going to drop another 450 points to parity. But anyways, we're sitting at support, um, but it's not really responding. And we're seeing the dollar index in general, which is you know basically the exact opposite. Uh, we're seeing that sit above those those previous peaks, uh, which to me, you know, I don't think that that the euro is going to get above 107 on any kind of recovery. And the longer it sits down here at support and doesn't bounce, the more likely it is that it's it's going to continue. So I still like I still like the idea of, of shorting the euro. Um, a, a, or, or maintaining a short position if you've already been short from a, from better prices, uh, but I certainly, you know, initiating right here can be a, you know, can be a little nerve wracking given the the length of this decline. A little more bouncing around would be uh, would be ideal. A little more consolidation before pushing lower, but I certainly do like, you know, I certainly think that 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 it's going to have a hard time getting above 107. Um, and and that that to me that would be about as high as it gets uh, before rolling back over. So the pressure's on the euro, just like just like there's pressure on the bid uh, in the dollar index, right above above this this these old highs, right. So we're using those old highs as our first area of support. So that's why I say maybe the euro gets to 107, the dollar pulls off down into here you know under 101 to like the 150 area and we'll see the euro maybe pop up towards that 107 area but then i would look for it to you know if it starts to fade from there then i would i would, I would become a, a bit more excited ramen ask what's your opinion on os pound okay so i see what you're saying pound aussie so pound aussie Pound Aussie has been one that I haven't, uh, I haven't really uh, had a good feel on this. This is one that 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 I used to trade very frequently, um, but really, really since the the Brexit situation, I've I've kind of lost my handle on it. Um, I don't really have a good uh, good look on this. I mean, it, it broke above this 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 previous support level, uh, but now it's. It, 
it's it's coming back underneath. So, you know, that's that's one thing that's a little concerning uh, is that it is it is starting to fail a little bit. Right, so it is starting to fail a little bit. We were looking at, uh, you know, I, I I actually prefer to just operate in in cable straight up right now, uh, and looking at cable. You know, we've got that head and shoulders we were talking about earlier. Uh, if it breaks through 123, it's going to continue lower. Uh, that'll likely put pressure on, you know, that'll likely put some pressure on uh, the pound crosses. So. You know, it's not. It's something that that I'm kind of staying away from right now. Joseph says, "Please, is it true that everyone should find his or her own strategy, despite all the info available, or could it be better to follow someone else's strategy?" You know what, Joseph? I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> I really am, um, because here I am. I'm, I'm talking to you, and I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm giving you some ideas and whatnot. And I can tell you, you know, I don't, I don't know what your experience level is. Right? I've been in this business for, for over 16 years, um, and I certainly, uh, sure thing, Raman. Uh, I can certainly tell you that that one thing that you, 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 you must be careful of. Okay, and this is not really like necessarily just so much my opinion is kind of something that that a lot of experienced traders will will agree with is that you've got to be careful about the the number of people that you follow the number of uh, the number of information points that you use so you know you don't you know one of the misconceptions is is that more information equals you know you're more informed and therefore you can come to better conclusions and 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 make better decisions but you know in reality uh you know you want to just try to keep it simple and i don't recommend you know each person has to formulate their own style of trading uh you know there will be a lot of similarities i mean technical analysis support and resistance is support and resistance and trend lines are trend lines and you'll see a lot of the same things and you know i even look around and sometimes i'll miss something you know, I'm, I'm, I'll miss a particular line, uh, and I'll look at it and I'll say, you know what, I, I, I kind of missed that, and and you know, I'll then maybe you know pencil that in on my chart. Now, but that certainly doesn't like go and change my my entire view on things. Okay, so I think it's a good idea to be aware of of others' ideas, but you know, not to uh, you know spread yourself too thin to where you're you're trying to listen to 50 different people uh, who are quote unquote experts. Uh, because you know in that case then you're gonna you're gonna start to get an information overload and our brains can only handle so much information at one time you know we can only we can only process so much and so for me like you look at my charts and and honestly I really don't even I have this 200 day on here I I really only look at it for for the indices uh, but I don't use it for anything else and if you notice my charts are really they're really really plain you know, like like this DXY chart is about as complicated as it gets for me. Okay, and and you know I've got some slopes in here and I've got some horizontal lines. I keep it really simple. Okay, I, I you don't see any indicators. You know, you're not going to see me using you know some traditional things like RSI. I don't even use Fibonacci uh, retracements, although I do know they hold some weight. Um, you know, I used to use Fibonacci. Uh, I use some Elliott wave in very loose terms uh, if it's an obvious sequence. But generally speaking, I keep it very simple. And I think that you know, whatever you do, the best thing to do is to keep it simple. I think you have to own your strategy. All right. So whatever your strategy is, okay, you have to be able to own it. And what I mean by that is, is you've got to be able to internalize it and be able to have conviction in it. Because if you try to go and follow other people's stuff. Uh, just because you believe in them, then you're not going to end up executing the trade properly because what's going to happen is is that you won't have the same confidence level uh, at the end of the day uh, that the person who's who, who's got the information uh, has. So, you know, and I've come across that on the prop test that I've been on. You know, there'll be someone that'll have a great idea and they'll be doing really well trading and someone's struggling and they'll be like, hey, you know what, why don't you just follow along with what I'm doing and the person struggling will you know, maybe pick up a thing or two here or there, but they're not owning the trade ideas. They're not owning the same analysis. And so it doesn't really, at the end of the day, help them so much. Um, but maybe helps provide a little bit of a guide, I suppose. Uh, but, you know, generally speaking, you know, you got to own your own strategy. 
and you know you got to do your own homework at, you know and, but it's always good to, to educate yourself you, know, you always want to be educating yourself and seeing you know a little bit of what other people are doing just I would keep the universe of the, the types of and numbers of people uh, fairly limited that's what I do um, you know I don't follow 500 people on Twitter and I don't you know and and, and they're you know in, in terms of my circle of, of analysts and whatnot that I talk to it's it's fairly limited uh, for that reason that that I don't want to be bombarded by information so hopefully that that kind of helped you Russ says what do you think about <laughs> Joseph yeah you too man you too uh, Russ says what do you think about the chances of the Fed not raising rates in December what if they didn't and being really non committed this morning with, with November FOMC minutes many moves seem to seem like irrational exuberance to me uh, well Russ I mean you know I, I actually to to be honest with you I, I, I kind of hope they they don't raise because that would just like really unsettle the market I think uh, since it's basically pricing in that we're going to get a hike Right, so if we're pricing in to get a hike, that's what the market's not expecting. And when the market get, doesn't get what it expects, you get massive volatility. So I kind of hope it doesn't happen, but I'm going to tell you right now, um, that is an unlikely scenario. Um, I mean, we're only, we're not very far out, what, December 14th, 15th, I think, 15th being the day, I think, maybe it's the 13th, 14th. Maybe it's a lot, another week after that. I have to look exactly. How uninformed of me. <laughs> um, but here, I'm looking at the, you know, this is the Fed Fed Watch tool. Uh, looks at the Fed funds. I've posted it to you guys before, but I'll, I'll post to those who maybe haven't seen this before. Uh, putting this in the chat box now. Um, as you can see here, for December, right? I had this up on the other screen. 93.5% uh, probabilities with the Fed fund futures are pricing in. Okay, so it's it's very unlikely, and and it's very unlikely that the Fed doesn't, right? It's very unlikely uh, that they don't, barring like some just some major shifts in in the next few weeks, which seems to not like it's not going to be the case. I don't really not think that the the November FOMC minutes are going to have any like major reflection uh, of any kind of differing sentiment than what we've already seen and heard out of the Fed. Um, and, and the economic data that we've gotten. So I think that it's it's they're going to get another one in. Uh, I don't know how many more after that, you know, but they're going to get another one in. And so right now, you know, really making making heads or tails of whether they're going to or not, it to me seems kind of like a futile exercise uh, until we actually get up to that point. So I'm not really I'm not really that concerned about it. And as a technical trader, I I. I really don't care, but and as a trader, I mean, I I I hope they don't. It'd be great. I mean, the market would just like like the dollar would <laughs> dollar dollar volatility would be sick. So you know, bring it on. So any other uh, any other questions? Something maybe I didn't look at. If you got a a trading specific question, like uh, like Joseph had a good one. You know about looking at other, you know how much how much is too much information and whatnot. I love talking about that stuff, trading psychology and and, and execution. Because uh, at the end of the day, you know you can have all your pretty markings up on the chart, but that doesn't mean it's going to translate into money, does it? Right. So a lot of times you can have great ideas, and then you can botch up the execution, and then you don't end up making money. And those are probably, to me, those are like those are like ten times more painful than getting into an idea that just doesn't work and you get stopped out. You know, watching watching a good idea that that you didn't properly execute work out is it's probably the most painful experience as a trader that you can you can take on, uh, at least in my opinion. And uh, I think I think many seasoned traders would would agree that that's a that's a really brutal one uh, missed opportunities that you are aware of, you know, not the missed opportunities where you're like ah I should have, you know, the 2020 hindsight trades. No, those actually I don't really I don't really pine myself over too much, uh, but I will say that the trades that are misexecuted and and then end up resulting in a big move, 
uh, where there was clearly a violation of trading rules uh, in play, those are really, really painful. All right, so I'm going to conclude uh, today's webinar. Uh, if you guys would like, we're going to do this again next Wednesday. I'm not going to be around on Friday. Uh, Russ says it'll think it'd be interesting and fun with no rate increase. Absolutely, you know, anytime the market's caught off guard, uh, that's when you get these. That's when you get the best moves. You know, when things aren't priced in. Uh, even when they're priced in too. So like if we were to get a, you know, dollar just continues to go, right? Let's say like the dollar index got all the way up to like 103, 104, got really extended. Um, there's a link right now. I just posted a link. This is for, if you want to sign up early, uh, next Wednesday's uh, webinar won't be around on Friday. Uh, we'll be around the following Friday though. So we'll be doing this on Wednesday and Friday at 10 GMT time. Uh, but yeah, you know, if we were to get the dollar, you know, all the way up here, 103, you know, just keep, just keep the bid and just keep on trucking. And then we get, the, you know, you get the rate increase. It'd be like kind of like the buy the, buy the, you know, rumor, sell the news event. Uh, I would take that too. Marco. <laughs> uh, Marco, that's a great question. If you, he says, if you could go back 16 years, would you choose to be a trader again? Absolutely. Absolutely, I, I I will never waver in that answer. Um, but the reason why I laugh is because because I know people who ha did it for a while, uh, and then after a few years, they you know they ended up moving on to a whole other uh, they ended up moving on to a whole other business, and, and and you know I mean completely different. Some went into you know into the health insurance business, some which is obviously been pretty fruitful for them uh and you know they they like they they just they they were glad that they're they're glad that they're not there uh they're glad they're doing what they're doing and, and in a lot of cases i don't know i don't say that trading's for everybody um uh, i think that i think that most people can it, it, with enough time and effort um, can get to a point where they can become profitable uh or they can you know even if it's marginal um I don't think that everybody will. I think that that you know that's such a such a psychological uh, you know that's that's what I was missing in the beginning was the focus on the psychological aspects of trading. Um, you know, it's it's one thing to do analysis and to to throw up charts and and to have really good analysis. It's a whole other thing to to execute those properly and fight your fight your inner instincts and, and you know, your fight or flight instincts oftentimes too often come into play and you have to kind of be able to manage those uh, and, and, and to be able to properly do the things that you need to do uh, to execute a good trade. Uh, it's actually, you know, it's funny because trading is very, um, it's very, it's, it's kind of like, it kind of goes against human nature. It's like you're just constantly fighting an uphill battle of, of you know, wanting to do things and not do things uh, that are presented to you in the market uh, and, and managing positions and managing risk. We seem to not really be like readily equipped with the, the abilities to do so without working on it. So, you know, you, you really, you know, a lot of the stuff that, and, I, and I'm thinking about doing this in the future, maybe you guys would be interested in this, is, is to start to focus uh, in a separate webinar uh, outside of just the analysis, is to focus on on discussing, you know, proper trade execution, how to handle certain situations, and not just provide cliches, uh, you know, as to how to handle your trades, but rather to, to, to provide, you know, actual process oriented uh, things that you can do to help improve your trading uh, because you know at the end of the day we're all you know we're all our own coach you know for the most part we're all our own you know it's just like just like being you know it's like athletics you know there's a there's a psychological component to that uh, that's very similar to trading so we kind of have to be our own coach and I think that you know there's you know there's a lot of cliches out there you know it's people you know you'll hear <laughs> you'll hear pundits say you know let your winners run and cut your losers well you know there's 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 processes that you can do to help do that besides just you know say oh well I'm just going to decide to you know I'm only going to trade opportunities that are offering me you know three pounds for every pound I lose right so you know there are ways to to manage that uh which which go beyond you know just some 
silly, simple affirmations and whatnot. Well, thank you, Joseph. Joseph says, I think, I believe that if we follow your advice and we will make it. It could take some time and surely we'll, by the time we sure we will get there. Uh, yeah, well, thank you for saying that. I mean, you know, I, I certainly, I make no guarantees and, and as all I do is I try to, try to be here to help, uh, to help you guys. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I've got a lot of experience in doing this, so I'm able to share experiences and, and, uh, I've been around, you know, literally hundreds of traders, uh, on the trading desk before. And, you know, I, I, so I've, I've seen a lot, I've been through a lot. Um, and so hopefully I can share those views, share my own experiences. And then at the end of the day, you can, you know, even if you take a little bit from that, uh, hopefully it'll help you, uh, improve your, improve your ability to make money. Uh, but you know, at, you know, I, if, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna end if I'm gonna end this webinar on saying one thing, you know, is is whatever you do, just make sure during the learning process that you keep yourself in the game. Okay, so that what I mean by that is 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 you know whatever you do, don't do anything that's going to be both financially and psychologically damaging uh, to your trading. So you know. It, it, when you're when you're learning and you're going through a learning process, you know it's easy to get caught up in the in the price action. It's easy to like think that maybe one idea is ten times better than another, so therefore you're going to put on all this risk. Then you find out that it that it doesn't work, and before you know it, you've, you're you've got huge losses, and you've got not only huge capital losses but emotional and and and, and mental capital has also been been clipped away. And and you know the two together, then you know you, you're going to find yourself digging out of a a really big hole so if there's one thing I can just say right now and uh, to conclude this is that to, uh, to make sure whatever you do your job is to keep yourself in the game if you're just learning this stuff uh, and, and and that goes even for experienced traders to always keep yourself in the game because there's always another trade to 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 move on to uh, the, the trade in front of you is never the last trade and it's never the last opportunity all right guys I'm going to uh, I'm gonna sign off now uh, I appreciate your attendance and your comments and questions. Uh, it's been fun. And we'll do this again next Wednesday, all right? Everyone, take care.